Over the past few decades, some very weird devices have hit the virtual reality market. Today, we're actually looking at these, virtual reality shoes. So strap in, because we're about to take our first steps in a whole new world, and break some stuff while we're at it. So if you've ever seen Ready Player One or this clip, you'll know what an omnidirectional treadmill is. It's basically a treadmill that you could walk on in any direction, and its most basic function is to transfer the movement of you, the player, to your character in game. Right now, virtual reality has a giant constraint of a user's player space. In a typical room, a virtual reality setup consists of anywhere from a 6 foot by 6 foot play space to, at max, a 12 foot by 12 foot play space. And in terms of physically moving around in the virtual world, that's it. That's all the space that you have. Any additional movement made in-game will have to be done using thumbsticks or trackpads. And while they do work, you have to admit, just about all games would be more immersive if you could physically run or walk and that's how you moved, using actual body movements for everything. Well, we're a long way from a consumer level omnidirectional treadmill that's affordable and works well. So what's an alternative right now? These, the cyber shoes. The main principle is to take the rolling tracks of a treadmill and put them on your feet instead. Then, instead of being strapped into a harness on a treadmill, you're in a seated position on essentially a rotating bar stool that handles all rotational movement. The whole setup is certainly odd, but does it work? How does it work? And sitting in VR, doesn't that decrease the immersion, not make the games better? Well, surprisingly, there's a gigantic list of compatible games, so let's take a look. And also, for anyone wondering if this will work as a pseudo full body tracking method, I'll tackle that as well. So these are the cyber shoes. In the package, you'll get a stool and all of its parts, a circular carpet for underneath the seat, a bag of USB cables, a charger, the wireless receiver, and of course, the cyber shoes. The entire instruction sheet was literally this sheet of paper, and putting it together the chair itself was easy enough. If there's one thing that I noticed right off the bat, the chair itself as well as the carpet feels really premium. Plus, this thing is just so smooth. The rest of the setup was pretty easy. Plug in the receiver, make sure to insert the USBs every possible way wrong before you get them the right way, then repeat that process. Turn on the shoes by the button and when all the lights turn blue, you're good to go. You do need to have your headset's cable up in the air to use the stool though, otherwise the cord will just get wrapped on everything. It does come with a single pulley, but I already have my headset's wire suspended on a pulley system, so I'm not going to use this one. Download the Steam application for Cyber Shoes, strap on all of your VR gear, put on the shoes on top of your shoes. I tried socks first and uh, yeah, that's just not going to work. <laughs> And now you're good to go. Enough waiting though, it's time to actually get into some games. Looking at the list of compatible games, I can't really find one that I enjoy that isn't supported, so I'll just boot up my favorite, Boneworks. My immediate reaction is... I feel really clumsy. I mean, not only am I physically bumping into things all around me in the real world, but I'm having a hard time controlling myself in game as well. After a few minutes, I do get a hang of it however. And it's at this point that I start seeing the potential of something like this. Imagine playing a high octane VR shooter like Boneworks, but never having to touch the thumbsticks. You use your whole body and your hands, and that's it. That either sounds like a dream or a nightmare to some people, I'm sure. But one thing that did stand out to me was how solid the game felt completely sitting down and not relying on the right thumbstick to artificially rotate me. In typical standing VR like we all do, using only your body to rotate just doesn't work all the time. Sometimes there's a wall when you need to turn around, and sometimes it's your PC behind your back. So yeah, sometimes you have to use the thumbsticks, and artificial turning is bound to make some people sick. In this case, being stuck in a centralized position allows you to use only your body's rotation to turn in-game. And after getting past the initial clumsiness, I could definitely see the potential. However, I still strongly feel that Boneworks is a game better played while standing. And no, cyber shoes do not work while standing, at least not right now. And I mean, most of VR is meant to be played standing. The point of VR is to emulate the real world's interactions, but to do things within that virtual world that could never be done in real life. Of course, simulators like Assetto Corso and Elite Dangerous are better sitting, but that's only because the entire purpose of that game is to simulate you actually sitting in a seat. But there is one game in particular that I subjectively think is a far better VR game while seated, and that is none other than No Man's Sky. 
When I first got Cyber Shoes, this is actually the first game that I thought of as being a perfect fit. It's an incredibly immersive and breathtaking game, even while sitting, and I actually enjoy it better while sitting. It's the kind of world that I could get lost in for hours, and among hours of getting lost, I've had moments where my jaw drops from the beauty of the procedurally generated surroundings, to the rush of entering a planet's atmosphere, to just the calm relaxation of finally finding a planet that isn't trying to actively kill me. So I started up my ship, flew to the nearest planet, and and open up the hatch, ready to take my first virtual steps on another planet. And something's not right. My jetpack is firing randomly, I'm getting disoriented, and I'm far from walking straight. In fact, I'm crab walking. Now for as much fun as it sounds like to crab walk across this entire planet, just trying to get back to my ship in time before the atmosphere killed me was enough of a challenge. Turns out No Man's Sky doesn't use a typical HMD directed motion type. It handles motion by direction of the controller, and there's no way to change the setting. I mean, I guess I did get it to walk straight, but only if I held my controller like this, which I'm not gonna do. I'll be honest, the reality of sitting down with silly virtual reality heelys on kind of hit me. The thumbs stick just works. It's easy. It requires little to no effort. It's intuitive. And here I am, crab walking across an alien world, getting sick while rubbing my feet on the floor. But I wasn't done. I gave it another chance. Adjusting some settings, getting a feel for holding the controller, and finding which position worked best, I learned to walk all over again. And that's when it kind of hit me. We weren't born into this world knowing how to walk. It takes a couple of years for a toddler to learn how to even clumsily bumble around. And humans can't even run for a couple years after that. I'm here in game. No, in a virtual reality. Using technology that practically wasn't even available to us just a decade ago. And I'm on a planet that I discovered, never before seen by another human being. So I took the time and I learned to walk. And walk. And I walked for literal hours until my legs were sore. And this is where I realized that moving in VR doesn't have to be stuck to thumbsticks and trackpads until we have the Neuralink. And we also don't have to wait for a full-fledged omnidirectional treadmill either. In something like No Man's Sky, a game filled with some of the most tedious mechanics possible, the gameplay loop is literally explore until you find something, collect minerals and resources until you can explore the next place, and repeat. But that's also the appeal of the game. And it wasn't until I walked around the circumference of a planet, using my actual legs to do so, that I realized the tedium of even walking can be one of the greatest appeals of virtual reality. Standing here on this mountain means more to me. It's not just some randomly generated cliff created by some algorithm. It's some randomly generated cliff that I spent my time and my effort to get to the top of. And that makes the view feel that much sweeter. Of course, there is another game out there that I feel deeply connected to. A game that something like the Cyber Shoes simultaneously feels perfect for and also like an utter waste of effort on. I know I've seen in some comments that people were interested in whether or not these could be used as some sort of pseudo foot tracking. And the answer is pretty much no. Yes, your avatar does move predictably as in other games when walking with the Cyber Shoes, but it's no different from using a seated position in VR chat and pressing the thumbstick forward. But it did get me thinking. What if you combined full body tracking with the cyber shoes? Could you technically have leg tracking that accurately conveys through your avatar that you're walking and moving at the same time? Theoretically, it could appear as if you have an unlimited play space, since your walking motions don't actually move you in real life, only your in-game avatar. Well, also, no. In fact, I practically broke VR chat trying to do this. Actually, I broke all of Steam VR to a point where the only way to fix my issues was to do a complete restart and refresh. If you've been in VR chat with full body, you'll know where this went wrong. You could be in VR chat with full body tracking all you want and move around and your avatar will do just as you do most of the time. But as soon as you provide directional movement, whether it's through the rollers on the cyber shoes or a thumbstick, the lower body of the avatar is overridden and you move into a walk or run animation cycle. Now, why my tracking and VR chat completely imploded on me here, I have no idea. All I do know is that full body tracking and cyber shoes are not compatible, nor do cyber shoes provide any sort of full body tracking. Does it move you as advertised and does it work however? Certainly, but nothing more. Now in terms of other games, every 
one I tried works just fine and does exactly what the Cyber Shoes intend to do. Replace both thumbstick inputs with physical motion and actual rotation. Pavlov, Arizona Sunshine, Half-Life Alex all work easily, although I feel like without tons of practice in something like Pavlov or Onward, my performance in game definitely suffered. And I wonder if a competitive shooter is really the right kind of application for something like the Cyber Shoes. And that brings me to what is the correct application of the Cyber Shoes? Is it for something as gimmicky as just walking around in No Man's Sky and a few other games? Something that is objectively easier by just using the controller input that has been a standard on every controller for 20 years. And no, I, I don't think it's a gimmick. Is it for everyone? Definitely not. Is it a really fun way to move around in VR and a way to be even more immersed in many games? Totally. This is a practical way to bring something that is totally impractical, like an omnidirectional treadmill, into someone's home, and do it relatively cheap. And while I don't think that it's perfect, it does make sense to use in a few games, and it's a totally viable way to play and move in virtual reality. And like I said, potentially have an even more immersive experience out of it. And years in the future, when the standard is to either plug our brains directly into a Neuralink to move in game, or we're starting up our own personal personal omnidirectional treadmills that are in all of our houses. We'll look back at devices like the Cyber Shoes and other innovative yet rudimentary devices that started it all and think, wow, that was odd. Virtually odd, that is. Thanks to Cyber Shoes for sending me a pair to try out. I do want to point out that these were sent to me, but not as a sponsored video, and I'm in no way affiliated with Cyber Shoes, and I'm not benefiting by talking about them. I was also under no obligation to make a video about them. It's simply an odd device that I surprisingly ended up enjoying, even though that enjoyment was under limited circumstances. I want to give a massive thanks to all of my Patreon supporters. They're truly the ones that essentially sponsor videos like this and make projects happen, especially my Omegas like Zimph, Very Evil Shadow, and Benji. There's no way I could be doing any of this without you. And like always, don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.